Hey guys, what's up? This is Hashtag Taylor. This is episode number three. We're about to pop in and check out my dude, Sam Holder. One of the dopest shoemakers in Barbados, but a hidden gem. So let's see, let's head over to this cave and see what's cracking. Samuel, hey, what's happening, bro? Good to see you, man. Good to see you, Sam. I gotta tell you, bro, you are to me like one of the hidden gems of Barbados. Your craftsmanship is outstanding. Uh, your technical approach is outstanding, but you're still kind of obscure. You're still kind of, you know, under the earth, kind of hidden, bro. We had to break into the cave to come find you, bro. We had to, like, you know what I mean? So the first thing I want to know about is like, who are you as a person? Not even before we get into the craft and what you do, but like, who's Sam Hall as a person? What's your philosophy? What guides you? My basic philosophy is oneness. One with the creator, one with the entirety of the first. Okay. That's, that's, that's it for me. I see. It's not complicated. How does that though now factor into your work? You know what I'm saying? Like, how does it, if it does? Yeah, it does factor into my work. And so, so when I'm working now, I don't see my work as negative or positive. Okay. I don't, I don't think in terms of this is bad, this is good. You know, I just see, well, this is the shoe that I'm working on. Okay. And from this point of view of being one with everything, you become one with your tools, one with your shoe. Okay. Even if you make mistakes and whatever, you still. You still got your head on, you're still okay. cool. Yeah. Okay. So there's a kind of uh, marriage between you, the craftsman, and and the craft. Precisely. Okay. So Sam, man, uh, I know that you've been in this game for a minute now. How'd you really get into it, you know what I mean? Like, where where did that come from? What's your background? How'd you get here, bro? I follow the shoemaker. Uh, and I right. follow the shoemaker. Oh, for real? Yeah, so the business is already here going. Okay. So, um, I was living overseas for a little while. And then they moved back to Barbados. And I started to play around with it, you know, get some books and stuff. And I'm basically, I'm self taught. I kind of like working with my hands. Right. I kind of like doing anything with my hands, you know, anything artistic or creative, like, you know, woodworking, art. Like, you know, I, I, I like that. Okay. So, shoemaking was right in my alley. I started practicing and I keep at it. This is the end result. Well, this is not the end result because there's so much to the crowd. There's still there's still a lot to learn for people. No, 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 no. Even at this level? Yes, yes, there is. Okay. So Sam, I know you for making sandals, mixing some outstanding, cool designs. Yeah. But I also know for a fact that you are a shoemaker. That'd be a, you'd be termed a cobbler, is that right? Um Shoemaker. Shoemaker. Yeah. Okay. What's the difference? Cobbler has a Cobbler is supposed to be a rough approach to shoe repairing. Oh. As far as I understand it. Okay. Like if say like in the business of tailoring, and you were to do some base stitching or whatever, yeah. you just putting this piece together. Yeah. That's that's not that's what cobblers do. Okay. It, it? But shoemakers, yeah, they give you a finished work of art. I see. So, Sam, what is it really that you love about leather? that you love working with it, you know? Is there anything in particular about leather? I work with fabric, I mm -hmm. work with, you know, I build clothes. Mm -hmm. But you build shoes, you build sandals, you do leather works. Mm -hmm. What's it about that medium that's your thing? The only thing you could tell is that it's a natural product. It's alive, 
or at least it used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I find that pretty fascinating. I got you. I don't have any problems with with different types of fabric or canvas or whatever. Right. You know, the fact that it worked in leather, that's not etched in stone, but it's it's my number one thing. You know, it's, and it, it lasts really long, and um, you have. Um, this there's all this flexibility going on, you know, it's easy to to, to shape right. into the shoe or right. sandal or whatever. Because some fabrics they don't have any stretch or anything like right. that. Right. They so don't have that gift. Yeah, yeah. No. So it's really it's really a headache to get it done. You can okay. get it done, but it's it's not as easy as gotcha. if you were using leather. Right, right. So leather is pretty much the perfect material for making shoes. Okay. So when this type of attention goes into the workmanship to me is a luxury product in a sense, it's a, it's a high-end product, it's a, it's a top tier product. So the cost uh, should balance out all that type of attention, the type of uh, hours and focus that's going into it. Do you get that type of customer coming to you and saying, yeah, um, I'll spend X to get that specific thing that I want? I almost don't, <laughs> which is unfortunate because there's so much involved in Producing this shoe, you start with it, your basic loss. It has nothing on it. it it's, it's, it's exactly how it came from the man. Yeah. The last car is a, a steel plate, so that when you start to nail, every every it's a entire nailing process. So the steel plate would turn back the nails when they go through and stop them from coming out. So this was the whole idea. You had to do it that way because you didn't have any fancy machinery and. This was the fastest way to do it. You can do it any other way. Wow. So if this person has a really wide foot, which in which this which in this case he does, mm -hmm. what you have to do is to take girth measurements around the joint, which is around, around the, the, the toes. Right. And then you take joints, and then you take measurements around the instep. Yeah. And then you take measurements from the heel across the instep type okay. of thing. Okay. And those, those are the basic measurements that you need. Mm -hmm. And then you go and you start to build them according to the measurements. Right, so this, this is the foundation. Yeah. Right, yeah, so, and apply pieces of leather and reshape them. Okay. If you, if you look at the bottom, yeah, you can see right here. That was the start? Yeah, that's the, this is, this is the original last right down through here. Yeah. And all this stuff here, this is the leather that I have to build up, build on, I see. to all at the back and getting it to fit and look good and everything. You, you're talking like, well over a thousand dollars, maybe two thousand dollars. You mention this to a regular guy, he's gonna think that you're insane. And you can't blame him because I mean he has a family and groceries, gotta buy groceries. So you can't you can't spend two thousand right. dollars on a pair on one right. pair of shoes. But mm -hmm. what happens is that every now and again you will get a customer and you can tell that this customer he can't purchase anything from the store. This is how important this is because his feet are either too wide, his step is too high, or he has six four arches, six toes, or whatever the case may be. But when these guys come along, you still try to make it, you know, you, you're sort of like, you get an opportunity to put your, your craft into action. Yeah, to solve and, a problem, right. yeah. So then, you say, well, I'll do it for probably $600 or something. Mm -hmm. Even that sounds outrageous. I told a guy that um, a couple of weeks ago. He says, "Gee, man, you're not, you're not helping me. That's all of that." So then he, he stood here yeah. and watched me. I think I was working on on, on this particular last. I was just shaping this up, and he was he was he did, he's looking at me and he's looking and he's looking. And then he, he says, "Gee, man, you really, this is a lot of work. You really?" I said, "Yeah." Did you guys used to make for the government, like make shoes for the government industry? Yes, that's why it started. My dad used to make shoes for the police. I see. This was back in the 60s where Barrow's government was trying to find cross men as opposed to importing stuff. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So my dad stepped up to the podium and he started to make shoes for the police. I see. Okay. And it was all by hand. All by hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like because how many shoes are we then, talking about though, man? Well, you had a maximum say 800 pairs for the year. Wow. Bruh, 800 so, pairs by hand? Yeah, so he used to work night and day, literally. Wow. No time off. 
Do you have machines? It, you have machines that can stitch on well, and you have machines. You actually have machines. No, downstairs that would last on the shoe and everything. Okay. But he would have to last on the shoe. Right. It's a shoe hand by hand. Okay. So he would just sit there, and the only time he'll take a break is if he's going to go to the washroom or he's going to eat. So he would eat, and as soon as he finished eating, yeah, he's back on Boom, the show. Steady, steady, steady. As the radio fusion, just above his right, finger. right. So he was. He was well informed too, you know. He'd, get, he'd be carrying conversations and he's there beating on his shoes and he doesn't break, he doesn't stop. Same. He's carrying this intense conversation with you. And he's just focus. nailing, he's just nailing away with like he was focused. I dig it. He was focused. He okay. realized he realized what he did and he realized he had to deliver. Mm -hmm. And that was the only way. Yeah. So he just sit his butt down and got to it. So yeah. Okay. How you feel about, you know, passing your skills on? I mean, like, do you do that? Are you about, about, about training or about, about other people coming under your, you know what I'm saying, tutelage? Yeah, I'm more than willing. Actually, some years ago, I had a, a class that was actually free. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was looking to find somebody that have a genuine interest in making shoes right. as opposed to somebody that is just, on the surface and romanticizing the shoe making thing. Mm -hmm. So that went on for a while but there was you no know, there was no real person with potential. Oh. But some years back um, I ran into this my Rasta friend here Tommy. So Tommy, and what's yeah. up my brother? You good to me? Yes my brother. Good to me. Um, yeah. you been with um, Sam for how long then? It's approximately about Two to three years. Two to three years. Yeah, two to three years. All right, and why Sam, man? Why, why, why? Because you, there's a lot of people working with leather. Yeah. Not necessarily building shoes, mm -hmm. but certainly working with leather and doing leather goods. But why Sam for you? I kind of find any boys that can step up the work I want to do. Same. And Sam was the only person that I knew that could get pushing to the level that I wanted to get there. Right. I didn't know any boys, so I had to choose Sam. I dig it. And he's really good, so uh, I go, I'll be good right now. Yeah. I feel you, I feel you. Sam Holder, thank you so much for having us, bro. I appreciate it so much, um, sharing your wealth and knowledge with us, uh, taking us through your paces coming up. Mm -hmm. I think it's dope, man, and I hope it's, um, it's been inspiring for me. I hope it's inspiring for others who are checking it out. This is Hashtag Taylor, you're watching. You're watching us. Watch us. You already met Sam Holder, dope artisan, shoemaker. Now we're about to meet Jason Lewis. Come with me, let's head over. Jason Lewis. Jason Lewis Shoes. Bro, thank you for having us here. Hashtag Taylor is great to have this opportunity to talk to you about what you do, bro. I am eager to tell you all Sweet. the way to Sweet. First thing I'm wondering about though, man, is um, what's your background? Because as far as I know, I, I don't think it's in art or design. So where are you coming from when you were, when you decided to go into a shoe line, creating your own line? I have no background in art, no background in design. Mm -hmm. What I have is a love for shoes. Okay. A deep, deep love for shoes. Right. So that transitioned me into doing a lot of research. And I spent a lot of time learning about the brands, the more popular, the more expensive brands. I lusted behind owning a pair of bespoke shoes. Right. And that was always very far out of reach. The higher end brand shoes start Gaziano and Gerlin, for example, is $1,200 US for a pair of shoes. I see. So, I kept looking, kept working, kept investigating the processes, and then I totally jumped one day. But you're not really coming from art, you're not coming from designing, no. you're coming from like, I just really love shoes, man. That was the large impetus behind starting just a this. I dig it. I wanted to, I wanted to bring a, Black owned high end men shoe to the world. I see. So, Jay, if, the way that I understand it, um, your shoes are made internationally. They're made in Spain. Right. So, I'm thinking to myself, uh, I'm wondering why they're not made in Barbados. The honest answer is cost. There is not, it is not that they can't be made here. It is just financially improbable to make them here. The price point to sell a pair of shoes, if made here, 
but to make my shoes three times as expensive as they are right now. Really? I would have to import the leather, I'd have to import the dice, have to import the machinery. There currently I don't I am I am not sure if there's anyone here with a Goodyear welting machine on island and all of my shoes are Goodyear welted and to offer that level of quality here would price me oh, very yeah, far over the market. Okay. COVID-19 caused me to reevaluate how I was making money. I traditionally was in a totally different sector. I have a folder on my desktop that is labeled as projects slash dreams. Right, right. And I decided I was going to pick the wildest and most outlandish next business idea and run with it because wow. 2020 has shown me that nothing is out of bounds. Mm -hmm. There are no limits at all to anything. I okay. bought some samples and it, I was very fortunate since starting to have very good customers. One customer bought a sample pair of shoes, offered me without even me letting me leave the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put them on, tried them on, and said, Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> this was, that was my very first period of sample. Right. That's how that's how business has been going for me. I see. What I'm curious about is the design. You know me. I'm coming from a design end. I'm also coming from a, a maker's end. I'm curious about uh, the designs that you come up with that you choose. Where where design is concerned, I am weak that area significantly it is it is the area that I know going forward to separate myself from the other lower end brands and to have to step it up. If perhaps you need more than that you are design help. wise then you might need some of the creative. Yes. We could do maybe the um, the models yes that then get further replicated. So there is someone possibly there's someone here who was Attempted to start making leather, uh, making the shoes here. Okay. When he, if and when he is ready and he can, I will transition. Hi hey guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, hashtag Taylor. This episode we met with two dope uh, designers, craftsmen, entrepreneurs in their own right, in their own lane, bringing out their own brands, making their shoes, putting Barbados on the map. Thank you guys. Uh, we look forward to seeing more from them. Join us next week on our next episode. Hashtag Taylor. This was Craftsman of Our Feet. Good looking out.